Capri of the Takradi Takra Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Hello and welcome to Face to Face on City TV. Ghana is preparing for the elections and so are we. This is the best platform that you can be on if you want to know everything election related. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. My guest today was part of the team that put up or prepared the manifesto that the governing NPP is using to defend its records and ask for a re-election in 2020. Yofi Grant is my guest. I'll introduce him shortly. You're welcome back. Yofi Grant is, for the purposes of developing the country, um, CEO of the National Ghana Investment Promotion Center. <laughs> he has that core job to do. But then for political purposes, he's also involved in the document, which is the, uh, the document that the MPP is presenting to the public to say to them that this is what we have done so far. Give us another chance. We'll vote for you. It is called a manifesto in plain language. He was a member of the team that crafted it. Welcome to Face to Face. Thank you very much, Maro. We have to talk about GIPC first before yes. we talk about the manifesto. Yes. Investment promotion, meaning you want people to come in to invest or people to go out to invest. Which one were you supposed well, to? Well, uh, for, for, for now, it's for people to come in to invest and uh, help us partner with Ghanaian businesses to um, develop our economy. And um, it's a very important part of any country's development agenda. And if you uh, are a follower of economic history, you realize that no country has ever developed as an island. I mean, even the United States, it was actually developed by immigrants from Ireland, from Holland, from all over the world. If you look at Germany, from the French Huguenots who were kicked out of France and crossed over to Germany, they all helped to develop the country. Asia, everywhere the same, even China. China opened its doors to foreign investors and created special enclaves um, for them to do their business with all sorts of conditions. For example, you get free land, mm -hmm. they give you free support, etc., etc. And today, um, we bear testimony to the growth of China. So, yes, Ghana to a, a resource-rich country um, with great people, relatively better educated than most of in the sub-region. Um, and of course, with an aggressive agenda of growth and setting ourselves as the hub for West Africa. But of course, with the AFC, FTA, we've also re-established ourselves mm. as the spearhead of African trade and investment renaissance and push, just like how we did. I'll ask you what the AFTA means to us, but mm. how different, or what's the difference between GIPC and Free Zones Board? The Free Zones Board is an authority that was set up to administer the Free Zones concept. Basically, the free zones concept, as we define in Ghana, is an enclave where you will produce a tax-free so long as you export 70% of your goods. Okay. So you must export whatever you produce. Absolutely. It's a must. Absolutely. Okay. The GIPC is, should I say, the investment promotion agency of the country, the whole country. So we work uh, to, to support all the agencies um, from trade to finance, to energy, to agriculture, tourism, tourism 
Um, just name it. We even uh, education. So do you health. go out and say to investors, that, "Hey, we have a vibrant tourism industry. We have a vibrant agricultural health industry. Come and see. Come and invest." Is that the kind of thing you do? Or well, when people come in, they are coming to a ministry for, say, sanitation, for instance, and they mm -hmm. invite you to come and be part of the negotiation. How does it work? Well, it, it works in a number of ways. Um, first of all, you know, for attracting for direct investment is is. It's not an easy task because mm -hmm. you are competing with quite a number of nations. So the first thing we do first is to brand the country. You need country branding to say, okay, where is Ghana? What is Ghana? And if you can sell a good story of Ghana, then you can move on to the next stage, which okay. is what are the opportunities? Okay. Most countries may define um, priorities, and we did define some priorities initially. Um, and we are going to even refine that even further. But others just as well, we, we want investors. We are crafting these areas for the investors to come in. We'll give you these and that if you do come in. Um, just like how we at GIPC are pushing that. Now we only try and uh, focus our incentives on FDI that partners with local people mm -hmm. or FDI that, that actually facilitates the um, rapid achievement of the SDGs because those are development goals. So that's where the difference comes. We are overriding institution okay. under the office of the president. So you'd realize that when the president is traveling on a mission, and most of the time when the president is traveling is to go speak to investors and business mm -hmm. people, jo just not political and diplomatic, even when it's a state visit. So GIPC is always in there some way. Yes. Brand Ghana, we used to have a Brand Ghana office. Mm -hmm. How active is that? Because that's critical for it, it investment promotion. It hasn't been very active. Which is uh, a problem then. Yes, and we are working to recitate it to define the brand Ghana. It's a very difficult task uh, because Ghana, fortunately, is, is a country of positive diversity. There are so many things. I mean, if you look at ethnic groups, quite a number of diverse cultures. Mm -hmm. And to try and encapsulate all that into one Brand. Brand sometimes gets difficult. But one thing that is surely overriding is that we are a great country. We are in the middle of the world. We are the only country on latitude zero, longitude zero. Mm -hmm. We are very friendly people. We are English speaking. We have summer all year round. And we have a vision. We, mm -hmm. we also uh, have able to establish ourselves from when we achieved independence mm -hmm. and spearheaded the African political renaissance. Mm -hmm. you, you go to some other countries mm -hmm. and even a taxi driver at the airport is able to sell Ghana to you as mm -hmm. a tourist mm -hmm. and you'll be interested in visiting places. We haven't done well with that beyond giving a t-shirt or a Lacoste shirt to our <laughs> taxi drivers at the airport and they charge exorbitant prices. <laughs> there is nothing else you get as a you, foreigner moving into this country. You are country. absolutely spot on. And I, I think it goes even beyond that. In most countries, um, and I, for India, for example, before you are licensed as a driver, as a taxi driver, you must have a certain level of education. You hardly meet an Indian taxi driver that is illiterate. You'll be at least some illiterate. So that certain things come automatically to you, then they train you. Mm -hmm. In the UK, you can't drive a black cab without going through a major test. No. So when you sit in a black cab, you realize that the driver probably knows everything about... He's an ambassador. He's an ambassador. He knows that. When you go to Singapore, from taxi to taxi to taxi, it's like they rehearse the narrative. They know the country's plans. They will tell you and, and, and will go further to get you attracted to things in Singapore that you must see. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten there yet. But it's one of the things that is clearly on the agenda in the next four years. Um, and uh, one of the things that we believe very strongly is critical once we st we've started the senior high school, the free senior high school program, mm. is that in the medium term, the minimum education of the average Ghanaian will be high school education. And therefore, there are certain things you will be able to grasp technically and therefore be able to be trained to do that. As GIPC mm. and you are the boss, what would you say you've achieved over the past four years since you took over this office? Something significant that you say, well, I put Ghana on a certain pedestal. You could list them if you want. You know, as a person, uh, I, I never think I've done enough. So I don't like to say, okay, I've achieved this, I've achieved. Maybe I can say I've achieved numbers. I mean, when we came in, we set a target of five billion in 2017 that we should try and push for five billion, and we're able to attract 4.91 billion. Uh, we knew it was going to be difficult in the successive years, but 
Um, I always target 10 billion that Ghana should be in a position to attract 10 billion dollars of FDI annually, annually okay. because of the opportunities we have and because of the plan and the architecture of our growth going forward, especially under this government. So I, I believe that that is worth it to do. But the, the good things that have happened is that we've put Ghana on the map. Really? Oh, yes. Everywhere you go, Ghana comes up. If but Ghana has to, always been on the map. When I say on the map, mm. it means in the eyes and sight of people, people's radar. Ghana has it more than yeah, ever. I'm, see, I'm saying that we have all the things working for us. First black African country to gain independence. All these um, having hosted the the African Cup, even mm. that was a mm. big chalk, uh, success that was chalk for us and so on. Our black stars have the past glory, mm. all of that going for us. Our democracy is beautiful. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a beacon on the continent. But that's where it ends. How does it translate? You have into to sell it. You can't assume that we've done these things so it's all nice. It's like a pretty woman who's very pretty. Everybody knows she's pretty, but she hides in her bedroom all, all day. You've got to go out for people to see you. Or go on Snapchat. And, and <laughs> <laughs> you've got to go out for people to see you. Yeah. And you've got to actually trumpet it. It's like mm -hmm. a diamond. Mm -hmm. A diamond has worth. But if it stays in the ground, it's nobody useless. knows. It's useless. Mm -hmm. So you've got to go out and sell. And secondly, you're in a competitive environment. Mm -hmm. People in Cote d'Ivoire will say we are this, we are that. People in Togo will say the same. People in Nigeria will say the same. You have to go out and sell the good story. And I keep saying that we are so blessed in this country because we have certain things just going for us. The fact that we have the after headquarters in Accra, does that mean anything? Does oh, it put us in major, any advantage? Major significant. Is it not just a bureaucratic headquarters that we have in Accra? How does it really the work? The symbolism of it is very, very important. Mm. In the sense that, okay, this is a country that since 2017 has been growing at an average of 7%. That's world leading. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, um, and maybe this year, the IMF and the World Bank projected that Ghana will be, again, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And then suddenly it's announced that, oh, you are headquarters of the AFCFTA. Mm. That is great testimony that there's a confidence in you to lead the African economic and financial renaissance mm -hmm. by bringing in investment for trade. And bear in mind, Africa's story is now different from what it was 30 years ago. If you look at the 10 fastest economies in the world today, seven are from Africa. That means Africa is ready. Um, but there's still a lot to do. We need to formulate that architecture that we have in Ghana right into Africa because it's working. It's worked for us. If someone mm -hmm. were to come and invest in Africa, mm -hmm. East Africa seems to be the place they love to go the most because the environment there is conducive. If they are supposed to move from East Africa, they want to go to South Africa mm -hmm. before they even think of West Africa. And even if they come to West Africa, Nigeria has the biggest economy. We clearly are just punching above our weight, but Maybe we may have an after headquarters, but that's where it ends. But don't you want to punch above your weight? I'd really like to suck a good heavyweight punch, although I'm not heavy mm. heavyweight. <laughs> I mean, I like to give it because, yeah. yes, it's important. Mm -hmm. But you have to recognize that Ghana, despite Nigeria's size, Ghana has been voted as the most attractive investment destination in West Africa. To the extent that I remember the previous uh, uh, Nigerian administration, uh, I heard one minister once got up in the cabinet and said, this small Ghana, this small Ghana serve. Did mm -hmm. it get more foreign direct mm -hmm. investment than we mm -hmm. are? Now, this is something that we didn't say ourselves. It was said by the World Bank that in 2018, Ghana was the most attractive place to invest in West Africa. And if you look at the, I mean, the accolades we've gotten over the past three, four mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. it tells you that there's something really positive happening. There's we, a new direction. We have talked about mm -hmm. tourism. Mm -hmm. Usually, when a person enters this country, and let's talk about the tourism part of investment drive now. Yes. You come into Ghana, mm -hmm. our Plushest place would be what they call the side they call airport city. Mm -hmm. But really, if you compare that to Nairobi, for instance, we are way below. Well, you do make a point. We have sanitation yes. issues. You have a point. But you see, it's, it's not just about that. It's also the opportunity for an investor, whether he thinks that in, under the long term he will achieve his investment objectives of return and growth. You know, so mm -hmm. yes, there might have, you might look at. South Africa, which has more significant infrastructure. You may look at Kenya. They've built their infrastructure over the years to be perhaps more competitive than ours. But we are building the opportunity and we are building the infrastructure to match it. And I dare say that Ghana probably has better opportunity today than Kenya and South Africa. The only reason why most investors will look at these countries is because they've established the ecosystem 
for financial transactions, investments, and all those things. Much better than we have. Mm. But we are now getting to that position that we will do it. And uh, on, the, on the point of the opportunities that we have, Ghana is a very saleable and marketable economy. So you're doing all of this. This mm. is a face-to-face -face on City TV. My guest is uh, Eofi Grant, CEO of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. We'll talk about the manifesto shortly, which he was part of the crafters. But let's finish off with GIPC and issues. COVID came, mm -hmm. strangely, and turned everything upside down. Indeed. How did COVID affect our investments? <laughs> it's a very interesting but strange story. Because uh, when COVID, the pandemic was announced and became pervasive all over in March, uh, I just said, oh gosh, all the hard work we've done. This, 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 it's this, going down. Yes, because borders were shut, um, countries were in quarantine, economies were ground to the halt, major disruption everywhere socially financially economically there was disruption everywhere and therefore for investors to keep flying around that came to a standstill or a stop at the moment but you know what the first quarter of this year um, foreign direct investment we recorded was in the region of 180 million dollars surprisingly most of it in manufacturing well wow. that means that the 1d1f must have hit some good you know years okay and we expected that at the beginning of um, March to April, we were seeing almost nil activity, depressed activity in I mean, real terms. We're having phone calls, we're having conferences, but we're not seeing real activity. Surprisingly, at the end of June, when we put our numbers together, it was higher than the first quarter. Of last year? Of this year. Okay. So there was some little growth from first quarter to second quarter. Okay. And I dare say so we are not we are not we are not um, stagnant. We are we are growing and it's going up. Yes, and I dare say that had it not been COVID, I am sure by now the flurry of activity that would have come us with investment money and investment interest in Ghana would have probably been overwhelming. Really? Oh yes. I, I, when 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 know, people have become, I mean, I don't know how mm -hmm. you may be looking at things, but there are a lot of who have lost their jobs and. And, and people are not coming in. Seriously, how, how, how is investment happening when there isn't even money to invest? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, it's an enigma that we expected that we'll see a real dip in investment. I was surprised that the second quarter registered $207 million of foreign direct investment. When, what, was the target, what was the target? You well, we didn't have a target per se. We have an annual target because okay. sometimes... So I the mean, annual target is how much? $10 million. And you and have ten, two, sorry, ten billion. And you have two hundred seventeen million two, in zero, one quarter. Two zero seven in one quarter. You see, you don't that, look at it in terms of quarters. Mm -hmm. For example, if I go and speak to an investor in January, he's not just I'm going to pick his bag and load it with the cash and come to Ghana. He wants to do his due diligence. He wants to do uh, see the opportunity, interrogate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then he might make an investment decision. He will probably send a team ahead. To come and have a look do their own due diligence mm -hmm. independently mm -hmm. to tell him that yes this is a place for you to go what they're saying was right then they'll do their business plan which could take six months okay so by the time he decides that okay we are going there it may be even 12 months or more so it's not one that we say that we expect that this quarter will get this the okay. next quarter by year on year this quarter, the success has been chalked 270. Yeah, 207. 207. Have we done better than we did last year, the same quarter? Um, I or you don't have the figures? I don't have the figures off the top of okay. my head because there's a lot of numbers. Okay, let's talk about So, mm -hmm. Doomso is gone. Mm -hmm. So, there's constant electricity supply. It's one of the key things people will look out for. Absolutely. How about taxes? Taxes have... Because you need so much money. This is a government. Yes, we that do. Needs money you know, to that, that's, that's the thing about economics, you know. There are many ways in which you can look at a country in terms of its economic development. Mm -hmm. Some may decide that, well, yes, let's, if we, we know that we have the business opportunity, right. let's just borrow to fund growth, um, or let's just use our uh, return earnings, that is taxation, etc., mm -hmm. to grow our economy. Mm -hmm. But if your economy is not growing, and if your economy is only based on your domestic side, and you don't have a boost in revenues from, say, exports, it gets a lot more difficult. Then you might either have to fall on investments or you fall on on debt on mm -hmm. borrowings mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on what your philosophy is and how you execute mm -hmm. it but i will say that under president akufuado he's clearly of the vision that 
we should, and I Ghana beyond aid, which is a very transformation statement, mm -hmm. we should use our own resources to grow. We partner with investment money and we'll create linkages with the global value chains and economies to grow our economy. You're not going to get it in one day. But as you create more, as you create more opportunities for investment, you create more businesses. As you create more businesses, you create more opportunities and more jobs. When you create more jobs and you create more businesses, you get opportunity for more taxes. What about the issue of rent? High cost of rent is clearly a problem for an investor who wants to come in here. And yes, it is indeed. It is indeed. And we are trying to rationalize that because there are many inputs into rent and even cost of construction here. I'm sure you have ambitions of owning your own house, mm. and so do many other people. But when you go and look at it and see, really, you, you really look in there, about 60 to 70 percent of the inputs of almost any construction are imported. We don't manufacture doors, we don't manufacture window sills, we don't manufacture doorknobs, we don't manufacture light uh, bulbs and you know fittings, etc. And that is why a policy like the 1D1F is extremely important. You seem really to love to have on this 1D1F, but... The it is of, the beginnings but of an industrial nation. But the factories you have are not many, that, they are not really that oh, much but, so far. But if you look, there are... For, for there, a party that probably yes. one day, we should have had one, 216 districts factories. 260, yes. We didn't say 16, we yeah, it's now 65. It was a policy that mm. says that at least each district must have a manufacturing facility or factory. We didn't say in four years we'll do all 270. But even having said that, I think at the rate at which we are going, there are over 300 proposals on the table. There are 170 that have been there in various stages of, you know, um, development. Mm. Some are already working and producing, like Twyfords in this thing. They're still um, on the way to Darwinia, Twyfords in Cape Coast. Um, you know, there are quite a number of them all over mm. the place mm. already. And we didn't say we're going to build a factory meant that you're going to build a humongous global You say factory. you're changing the goalposts you know, in the, in the, or you're changing the rules in the course of the game. You said you're going to build factories. Now you're saying you're providing technical support for factories. No, no, no. We never said that. We said we, we, it's a policy. Always remember, there's a difference between a policy and an activity. Mm -hmm. You can set a policy to say that, okay, every child, every child must go to school. The funding structure is separate. It's a totally different thing. Okay. But the policy is that every child must go to school, period. Every child must go to school is one of the things Nana Kufado has done for senior high school under the free SHS program. And he said he has done more and he needs four more to do more for you. We'll interrogate that shortly when we delve into the issues of the manifesto as presented to Ghanaians during the party's event in Cape Coast over the weekend. This is Face to Face on CCTV. My name is Umaru Sandamadu. My guest is Yofi Grant. Don't worry. This is the beating heart of an African, ready for what is next. And this is the sound of a Ghanaian drum, setting the pace. Together, it creates a seamless rhythm of what is and what is to come. A sense of purpose which says that there is more to the Ghanaian than a dream. Ghana always stands ready and First National Bank is happy to invest, partner and help Ghana to discover more. This is why we are happy to announce our acquisition and subsequent merger with GHL Bank, Ghana's leading provider of mortgage financing. A merger which delivers an opportunity to discover more growth and prosperity for all Ghanaians. Listen to the heart beat to the rhythm of the drums. It is time for Ghanaians to discover more together. First National Bank and GHL Bank come together as First National Bank. How can we help you? You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. I am Omar Sandama. My guest is a member of the Manifesto Committee and also CEO of the GIPC, Yofi Grant. Tell us about this Leadership of Service Manifesto which has become a covenant you're going to present to Ghanaians ahead of election 2020. Okay. I'll start with a little history. That we, we have a, a president who has spent most of his life pursuing certain objectives. And uh, I met him many, many years ago, a couple of decades ago. And uh, I, are, I... Are you related? Because he's been accused of running a family and friends government. <laughs> All of us in Ghana are related. Okay, some way, somehow. Some are, you way blood, somehow. are you blood related to him? Well, 
I am not sure that if you go to ancestry.com and you're not finding out, <laughs> you find okay. anything. Okay, okay. that's fine. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> yes, but you know, he had, and I saw that he had this dream, and his whole dream was that this country can be much better and be like the Singapore or, or the Switzerland of Africa, and he just couldn't understand why it wasn't done or couldn't be done. And so this conversation of radically transforming Ghana has been at the top of his head. You know, and uh, I remember from the manifesto of 2008 through to the manifesto of 2012 through to 2016, you find a certain common thread that radiates through. But it, for him, it wasn't just um, development because he kept saying that development must impact the people positively, not one, but all. And so for him, and usually we, the uh, people, have, I have an investment banking background. We're usually very hard about certain facts and things. But he says, well, you can do whatever you want. For him, if it doesn't affect everybody, the smallest child to the oldest person, then you haven't uh, done enough. Forgive me to ask this. Yeah. Is he a socialist? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this kind of mindset is mostly the you socialist find that, kind yeah, of thing, isn't it? You find that with socialists. Let's say he's, he, he has a human heart. Clearly, I mean... He's not new to business. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably don't know that he was instrumental in bringing um, the forebears of MTN into this country and DHL and all that. And he set up his own law chambers as a business. So he understands business from the formation to the running and all that. So he understands it. But he also has this, you see this insatiable desire to make things work for the ordinary person, whoever that may be. So that is always there. And so you can give him all the technical things that you can. He'll tell you how does it work for the man on the street or the man in his village or the man in the suit in the office. He never leaves out all the whole you know, value chain of humanity in it. So that for me was a very laudable um, you know, idea to, for anybody to have. And so in 2016, I mean, the whole idea, and I remember, if you remember quite right, that um, there was a time where we had um, a manifesto that had transformation as its key focus, and it was to do with people, etc., etc. We woke up one day for some other people to say that, well, they are the ones who did it. And, and needless to say, and even, debate about the it, needless to say, when they were given the opportunity, they did the opposite. So I'm sure they didn't really understand what that meant. But in 2016, we had a, a broad plan. And we, we, we said, okay, how is the best way to prosecute this whole transformation agenda? And it, very, it became very clear that, first of all, you have to, it's like when you want to build a house in the forest, you have to clear the land. When you clear the land, then you dig a foundation, you put the foundation there. That is going to be what the house is going to be built on. So if you don't clear the land and you don't do that foundation, trust me, your house won't be well built. So he says, well, first of all, let's tackle the issues as we saw them to make sure that we eliminate some of the you know, nuances and some of the difficulties the economy has. Um, and, and so uh, and by 2016, it was very clear that our economy was in trouble, you know, to the extent that we have to run back to the IMF, you know, for some uh, policy credi um, credibility. Uh, for we needed the IMF to give us policy credibility before we could go out to borrow and stuff like that. So, you know, he said, how is that possible? A country that has so much resources, has smart people, why should we allow the economy to go so low that now we need somebody to come from somewhere to tell us how to do it? So that is the foundations of building that whole economic transformation that, okay, so let's clean up stuff. Um, let's put the economy... In a, in, a, in a space where we can see that it's stable because on that stability then we can grow because if we don't have stability we can hardly grow and if we don't grow we can hardly satisfy the people the people can't consistently be hustling on the back of stability you need to grow the economy you need to create opportunity for people you need to also do other interventions that will make the country a great country to live in so that is how we started and so for us we said, what are the critical things that you need to attack to make this story I'm telling work? Create an opportunity for jobs and growth. So hence, you titled your manifesto, An Agenda for Jobs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, an agenda for jobs means that you have to create platforms that can create jobs. And secondly... Have you succeeded 
in creating the jobs after four years, for which reason your manifesto title now changes from agenda for jobs to um, leadership, leadership yeah. and, transforming and transforming Ghana for Ghana all. For all mm -hmm. as I have mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we have. We have to a great extent, but it's not enough. It's not enough. How many jobs is enough jobs? There's you, never enough jobs. There you have to keep going. Even the so-called mighty United States of America is still grappling, grappling with jobs. China has moved 600 million people you, you out created, of poverty you created by creating opportunity and you, jobs. You created fleeting jobs, mm -hmm. jobs that will last three years and expire. Why I'm talking about so? NAPCO. NAPCO was supposed to set a foundation for helping young people transition from no job into a job. I don't see how that can yeah. ever be a bad idea. Yeah, but if you don't create... It's like a footballer. You can't get up one day from your house and quickly jump on the pitch and say, mm -hmm. I'm playing. Yes. You have to train. Yes. You have to exercise. You have to build yourself. Yeah, but if so you train them for three those, years and yeah. you pay them allowances, mm -hmm. there should be an exit plan. So what jobs are there the at the open plan, end of the The exit plan? plan is creating... And if you listen very carefully, you realize I, I kept saying that you have to create opportunity for job creation. So you must have policies that will transform what you have into one of job creation. Right. For someone who no. was recruited onto NAPCO in mm. 2017 or 2018, when their contract terminates in 2019 or 2020, mm. practically, what job are they going to do? That's what I'm asking. Let so, me tell you something. Yes. You were asking me a question about one district, one factory, and mm. I said there are 170 factories. There are about over 50, I think 70-something that mm. are complete and are working. There were factories that were not there before. They've created jobs. The more you create, the more businesses, and I said at the beginning, that the more businesses you create, the more opportunity for jobs. So the policies that we do are there to also create opportunity for jobs. You're not going to get it all in one day. Like I said, it's like building a house. The, have you created all the opportunities for no, jobs? No, you can never do that. You have to consistently build on. Yeah, but how many opportunities have we created okay, for jobs? So, 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 maybe, one F, uh -huh. so first of all, the one day we have to state that you haven't built factories from scratch entirely. There are some you've just provided technical support to and you've listed them under 1D1F. One These factories would have already hang been recruited. Hang on, hang on. That is where you are wrong. Okay. One, I keep telling you, 1D1F is a policy. Good. So even if there was a factory mm -hmm. that was defunct mm -hmm. and wasn't working, mm -hmm. it may be needless to go and build another factory next yes. to it. You, you it will up. pop it up. Good. And create opportunity for jobs. For if you don't do that, that factory is going to sit down yeah, so like my, a chair. My point is still here mm -hmm. that that factory had workers. These workers were... But the there. workers were not there. The factories were not working. They were defunct. Yeah, but you can't say you are creating a new job for an old factory that has already been existing. Really? Yeah. So if, if there's a factory that is empty, mm -hmm. there's nobody working there, and mm -hmm. you come and say, I'm going to put money in, I'm going to employ you. Isn't that a new so job? So that's, that's a new factory, new job. But for factories that are already existing and running, you have uh, just provided them with technical support. But that there technical no support is going to expand the factory that so more people can be employed. So that's 1D1F. That's which, are that, part which, of 1D1F. Which, are, which other areas have you created? Planting for food and jobs. Over a million smallholder farmers have been assisted with um, extension services. Young people from university, over, over 500,000 of them, have been employed to do extension services in the field. Really? Yes. I thought 1D1F, one uh, 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 one. planting for food um, and jobs is... Uh, NYA mm. is creating opportunity. We are building Stadia. We are building youth resource centers. We are going to build more factories. The more factories will be built. We are going to ensure that we have more investment because the more investment comes in, the more businesses can be created. Is it so? So is it that we have cured the unemployment situation? No, we haven't, but we are on the track to curing it. How how soon and when would we cure it? Well, to the extent that we are able to prosecute and you vote MPP back into power, you cure it even faster than the ever. question would be asked that we gave you four years. Why do you have to ask oh, us you, for you, another four I, years? That is pre the presumption that you think you can solve all the country's problems in four years. What are the key problems you've solved in four years, aside from free SHS? Well, we've cleaned up the economy. Do you want me to list them for you, the things that we have to do? <laughs> I can easily do that for you. You've cleaned up the economy, which has also led to troubles, because people have their monies locked up. People have lost their jobs. So you know that, what? That's a cleanup that is positive on the cleaning side, hadn't but been, negative if on If that the... hadn't been done, mm. more people would have lost their money. Over four million depositors would have lost all they had. They still and have... a lot more would have lost their jobs. They've still lost Sometimes, it anyway. Eh? They've still lost it anyway. No, no, four million, people, four million account holders. No, four million account holders didn't lose their accounts. But they don't have their money. That's what matters. But no, there are some who still have their money in their banks. Yeah, but they haven't But tell it. me, let me ask you a question. There's, there's a young man. Let, a young me man let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question because you are a bit of a moralist. Mm. So, if you had 
a crooked institution that obviously is not playing by the rules and the law, mm -hmm. running some, some business, are you saying that it should be allowed to run because it employed people? Or no. because people put money into it? No. What's your simple answer? No. So you've answered your question. Good. So let me, let me ask another question. Mm -hmm. When you provide the better the alternative, it should be better. There's mm -hmm. a young man in Asimfosu who mm -hmm. wanted to marry. He was investing or saving his money with one of these institutions, wanting mm -hmm. to get married. You came and said, you're coming to do cleanup. Fine. You've cleaned up, but he still cannot have his money, so he cannot marry. Yes, Clearly because that, it worked for because him. first of all, some of these banks that were even funded by Bank of Ghana took that money and invested in their own companies, depositors' money. Yeah, and if those companies run at a loss, then your deposits are gone. They are gone. Somebody has to bring it back. Government, again, had to find 21 million billion uh, CDs to try and prop up. Now, we're not saying that we're not paying anybody. But it will take a while. But it's so taking they, forever. This while is taking forever. Umaru, it's, it's such a laborious... Umaru, I'm surprised you say it takes forever to, to resuscitate a dead horse. You probably might flog it <laughs> ten times. Don't wake up. <laughs> so see. you have to restructure it. Okay. Here's a situation where mm. these institutions were heading the economy, not just the financial sector, the economy down the drain. Mm. On an economy where we had, a, we, had, we had bored over the hills, an economy where interest rates were way above anything that can sustain any business in the upper 30s, an economy where inflation was high, an economy where we had a major deficit, and somebody comes and says, hang on, hang on, hang on, slow down, guys. If we are go at this rate at which we are going, in two, three years, we won't have a country. In the next four years... So let's solve that problem first. In the next four years, mm -hmm. if you're given another chance, based on the manifesto you presented to Ghanaians, what are the things we should be looking out for? I think we should and, be and looking for. Be we, we should be looking for a certain transformation. We are creating more opportunity for jo growth in jobs, definitely, without a doubt. And in everywhere you go, you see infrastructure. Infrastructure is one of our core, our core. Um, you know, are you uh, sure? Deliverables. If, if you have, if you have, have you delivered already, or you are yet to deliver? We are delivering. So have we delivered? So why have you There's rejected no... John Mahama's uh, call for a debate on infrastructure? Oh, is it, it a debate that will bring a road? No, the debate will show Ghanaians that this man is better at bringing the rules. Oh, than the no, other he had a chance to do it. Yeah, and what he, happened? And he said he did. And he oh, he did? To, he said he should come and show yours. Oh, really? He actually just recently did launched Did you listen website. to Baumia's lecture? Yes, I did. And did, did, you didn't see any par any comparison? I have... I'm waiting did you for, or did you not? He, John Mama is I asking, expect you to have seen that before you come and ask me that question. John Mama because is... Because then it means that you are... You are no, you are, I, I, you have, I, have, your I have seen, but... Your, no, I have seen what Baumia presented. And you doubt it? If you, now, Do you doubt it? If you, let's let's turn the <laughs> interview around. It's a face-to-face -face interview, but I'm supposed to be asking the question. You shouldn't be asking me. Yeah, but I want realism. No. Not just political talk. I want realism. The realism is that uh -huh. people will see the Kwame Nkrumah interchange. You mm -hmm. have argued that you have you have done four for one. Mm -hmm. His hand, handlers, in Jomama's handlers, have argued that what we have at Kwame Nkrumah circle is bigger. You are CEO oh, of the... Is it, is it bigger than what you have at, at the end of the motorway? Yes, it is. In what sense? In terms, of, in terms of length and depth and everything. It's bigger? Yes, it's so bigger. So that means it must have cost more than four of them put together? They have given the explanations, and I'm sure it's still out there, the jury. They have talked about, you are the CEO of mm -hmm. the Ghana Investment mm -hmm. Promotions. You want people to fly into Ghana to come and invest here. They use the Kotoka International Airport. The Terminal 3 was his legacy. Mm -hmm. So he's asking you to also show him legacies that you have. You have How you long have. did it take the NDC to do that? How long? They had eight years. They had eight years. And yet, if I were to go into the compendium of what we've done in three and a half years, mm. you probably will be, as I say, flabbergasted. Really? Because you asked. The roads that have been give me, the railway that has been recited, give me the four few. interchanges that we've done and mm -hmm. we are still doing, mm -hmm. including the one that would be probably the first four lane interchange in Ghana, um, uh, just um, Pokwasi. Pokwasi. And you say you don't see these things. You are comparing to just one second interchange and you clap for something. But, but, but I did very well. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, but you he has, he has, well. he we are doing roads, we are doing railways, um, and we are even announcing more things to do. Mm. But he has also presented a list of things that he has done, a compendium, you, okay. as you call them. So, and, uh, so you want to do a comparison? Yeah, I'm just asking if uh, you, you, you want to do that. 
Well, you because as a he's, he's, asking, asking, he's asking, asking you for a de- he's asking you for the debate. But and it's not a debate that will show that there's a road here or not. No, the, the, debate, the debate who use it to know that there's a road here or not. We have told you what you've done. There's a, you can do a fact check and a, check from ours. A theory they brought a green book a theory, that had photographs of things that had not been done and claim they had been done. There's a theory in communications that says give it to them and let them know that you gave it to them. If you have really our evidence mm-hmm. is that they're on the ground. They do exist. You can check the stadia we are talking about. We can show you photographs if you want. The roads we are talking about. I can show you photographs of the roads. Do you have in your manifesto mm-hmm. that you want to build an airport in Cape Coast, or is this in the speeches? Oh no, no, we do have it in the manifesto. Yes, we. Why should do build. you need an airport in Cape you Coast? You know what? People underestimate the, the the progress of development and transformation. Explain. You know, let me ask you something. And I'll give you a bit of historical perspective. When Henry Ford first designed the motor car and he introduced the idea to America, people said, "What? Well, never. You can't allow this contraption on the road. And that's why. He said, because it will disturb the horses. And they were always used, they used horses and horse-drawn carriages mm-hmm. to the extent that the first few motor cars that were put on the road, there was a law that if there was a horse-drawn carriage on the road, the motor car had to leave the road. So the horse will pass there because the horses will be frightened and they'll hurt people. It's all sometimes the mind. Progress is the mind. And that is why inventors and, and creators and visionary leaderships are far and few between. Because well, let me answer. Mm-hmm. Because they come out with ideas that very often people who have not conceptualized it do not understand. Let me tell let you me give you concept. something about Cape Coast. Mm-hmm. Cape Coast and the region, the central region, mm-hmm. is slowly becoming a hub of good business. Mm-hmm through 1D1F. Mm. Secondly, Cape Coast and its environs is a hotbed of tourism potential. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if today I want to go to Cape Coast and come back, the in and out, minimum five hours, Mm -hmm. not to mention the dangers on the road, etc., etc., which I don't want. If I were to have an airport or an airfield in Cape Coast, direct and fly, direct fly, probably take me 20 minutes there 20 minutes back any other incidentals maybe an hour smart so one hour 40 minutes total journey in and out of cape coast which would you tell me i should do do you know the flaw in your argument what's the flaw you have an airport mm-hmm. three hours away from accra at Ho, the water regional capital mm-hmm. your party came into office mm-hmm. and said that that airport was useless you have do you know why because you have not flown a single aircraft to that airport but do you know why Ho, hang on hang on hang on Ho, Ho is you, no no, no there's cape no coast. flaw in it mm-hmm. there is no flaw in it okay please realize that in business everything you do there must be underlying business cases and assumptions okay if i take the whole area mm-hmm. we are yet to build a business infrastructure there that would warrant the airport. So I always question, so why did you build it in Ho? I can tell you why I built it in Cape Coast. And I'll give you tangible because reasons. Because votes from Cape Coast. But I do, I'm not doing necessarily only because of votes. Most, Whoever most. did it maybe wanted votes in Ho. Mm. We want serious movement and this thing in Cape Coast. Yeah, but but what opportunities are there in the Volta region? Are they like the opportunities I've outlined? So, outline. many so then they should come out, whoever put it there, should mm. say, this is why we built the do you airport. Know, do you know our tallest mountain is in the Volta region? Yes, I know. I've climbed the Fajato. Do you know the monkey sanctuary is in the water region? Yeah, but the other mon- monkey sanctuaries everywhere. It doesn't mean I should build an yeah, so what anywhere. is anywhere. Uh, is there some the business yeah, so case what, that what, you make? But what does central region have that the water region does oh, not so have? much. For which reason we should have an airport in central and not in water? There's so much. I've told you that the central region is becoming a hotbed of business. It's also become a nexus of tourism, even within the sub-region. People can fly from Cote d'Ivoire. People can fly from Burkina. People can fly from Kumasi. And yes... Maybe somebody felt that they needed an airport in Ho. They should have come out with their basic assumptions to say why. And I'm telling you, do you know how many people go to Cape Coast on tourism eh? a-, a year? Ghana Tourist Board tells me that at least 300,000 people go to Cape Coast alone on tourism. And the same doesn't go to Volta Region? I don't think you have 300,000 people going to Ho, to Ho on tourism. You do not have? I don't think so. We've registered that for Cape Coast. Now, that is just the people going for tourism. Now, if you talk of people going to central region, that may add another maybe 100,000. Mm. So you're already finding a certain population or market that wants speedy in and out. I sit here and every time I talk to investors, I talk to people who visit. And we always say, oh, go to visit Cape Coast. Ah, I can't go in and come back. Maybe my flight is tonight. If I go by road, I'll miss my flight. I can't do it. Do you not think... Wait, you haven't finished. Let me ask you a mm-hmm. question. 
the smarter thing to do mm -hmm. would have been to dualize the Cape Coast Road. Do you know how As much it tourist, costs? Uh -huh. do, you, do you fancy sitting on an aircraft and flying 20 minutes, or you would prefer sitting in a car and watching the Fanti Dokun being sold at um, uh, Yamranza Junction, By for instance, Coast, on your way to Cape Coast? Fanti is still stolen in Cape Coast. If I get to Cape Coast quicker, I would rather do that. Yeah, but on your way, you would get to see so many things. Yeah, you but I don't want to spend two and a half hours driving to a crowd. You're a tourist. Yes, I still don't want yeah, to spend two and a half hours. Yeah, but if you the amount of money you know, when you used to build an airport, you could dualize the a, highway. That's a very false, you that's a very false assumption that every, well, every tourist who comes is more interested in looking at the scenery along the roadside than where his destination is Cape Coast. It's a fallacious argument. It's an assumption you can't make. Let me give you a parallel. Mm -hmm. I've been to Cuba a number of times. There's a certain tourist enclave called Valadero. Mm -hmm. Varadero by road is just about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half from Havana. Mm -hmm. Varadero is purely a tourist enclave. They have more flights to Varadero than they have to Kutoka. From Central America, from the U.S., from Europe, from Asia. Why? Because of tourism alone. No, Varadero has nothing else. And I see that vision for Cape Coast. Can it be wrong? No. Because we have already 300,000 people go there annually. You already have a certain flow of transport, not to mention kids who go to school. So there's education as well. School and children will be flying. You're going to secondary school in, say, um, what's the name Tomorrow, of St. Augustine's, you take a flight from Accra to Cape Coast. That I'm telling you, if I had a child mm. in St. Augustine's, mm. I'll be happier knowing that in 30 minutes he's in Cape Coast that two and a half hours is on the road and I can't vouch for where is on the bad driving and, and all that. And if you dualize it, it wouldn't be better for him. I don't think so. I, it will still be easier for me to know that in 30 minutes is in Cape Coast. You know Accra Kumasi, if you, you were, know a major chunk of the traffic are students in the universities. Yes. So why can't it be the same? You for are Cape the Coast? boss of the investment promotion of Ghana. The yes. Confidius factory is one of the big things you are touting. You do not think that an investor in Accra who wants to go do business in Cape Coast will be excited to see what you are doing on the road, stopping at Econfi to see He'll that. probably be more excited to know that his goods will get to the market just in time for export. This is face-to-face -face on City TV. My guest is uh, Yofi Grant, he's CEO of GIPC. My name is Omaru Sandamalu. Don't go away. The conversation is getting more exciting. Chain. <laughs> Oh yeah, Augustine, Minya Guinness, Ne Origin, 19 crates, Auto Dibio, Minya 14 crates, Third one, Minya Television, Fourth one, Minya Mobile Money, yeah. uh, Fifth one, Masana Mobile Money, and to win you woman a day, I Jimmy Pa, Mamma Munjai, win you woman. Seven or so, Ben, Wild Boom, almost say, I'm a market and ask an apple soon. Because not even in a market or yes, so on a ball, ball, ball into our bites and so when you're today, what Baba, now I wash a board now. When you boom, the sun, I can't. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. In concluding, you have said your manifesto is going to transform the lives of Ghanaians. I remember John Muhammad's manifesto of 2012 had transforming life changing Ghana. They even had it embossed on the Metro Mass buses. I've seen that in your new manifesto, you plan to relaunch Metro Mass. Mm -hmm. I, what does transforming life mean? Uh, that, he said that. We didn't say that. We yeah, said we transform the economy. Okay. I mean, in the end, I'm not sure how they transform life because mm -hmm. it, it, things went negative for most people. And the five years of doom saw a collapsed economy and all that. And the, as the economy has grown, if not for COVID, we'd have seen a totally thing. But the priority for us on the economic side today is to stimulate growth, stimulate 
development and stimulate investment into the real sectors of the economy, um, industry, agriculture, um, basically. Because the, the reason are, I use the Metro the, Mass bus is that mm -hmm. your manifesto said you'll be relaunching the Metro Mass mm -hmm. bus. I don't know why you're doing that when we have Ayalalu buses sitting at their, at, their, at their terminal in Adenta, nothing is happening to them. Yes, but you should you ask why. You have promised free Wi-Fi why. in schools. Yeah. You're not providing that. You're not putting it in your manifesto again. Why are you telling us about things you were supposed to have done that you, are not, you have not done and you still but we. To? We did 80, at least we believe we did 80% of what you are listed there. And I said, we are not going to, you're not going to do everything in, in four years. And I told you that it's a progression. And just like I use the graphical experience, you are building a house. You build the foundation first. Then you build the shell. Then you put on the roof. Then you start painting. Then you put in fittings. That is how you build something. You build an economy. An economy is not a miracle that, boom, today is standing there. Mm. You build it. You make sure that you have stability in the economy. You make sure that you put in the pillars that will engender growth and development. So have these then, pillars been driven to the... Oh, areas? absolutely. I think so. I think prior to COVID, we were on a very good trajectory. So we actually like, exited the, um, the IMF uh, program on a very good note. We still had very great relationships with the, world, with the IMF to the extent that in the COVID area, they extended um, an arm... Uh, an, to, to all hand, countries to, of the to world. all countries, including world. Ghana. And you want to so that, to Yes, if there's relief, mm. Mm. we have to give relief no because problem. we understand that this is a global thing. Using uh -huh. your building of house symbolism, so mm. what's the next stage in 2021? Well, we put the foundation there. We've started building the house. Mm -hmm. And that, like I said, our priority is to stimulate growth, um, development, and investment in the real sectors mm. of the economy. So, for example, in industry, we have a 10-point plan where we are creating hubs. Um, there's a petroleum hub, there is the automotive hub, and you've recently seen, uh, once again, you see that is how vision works. Mm. Sometimes you say things and people say, oh, okay, impossible, you can never Well, you it. force people to buy just VW cars in Ghana, even though they want to import slightly damaged Toyota cars. Which will cost us a lot. You know how a second-hand much? No, much no, if you're bringing a car with a broken fender, a broken door, <laughs> you provide a job for the Kokompe guys who would sell to you a fender oh, and also Maru, get a job I, I, for I'm someone. I'm sure that you should say that. If you had to buy a car with a broken door, mm. think consumer, mm. a car with a broken door, than a brand new car, at, at, yeah, at the price car, that is on is on the VW. You are forcing me to buy. Why didn't you? That is the that? beginning. Yeah, there no, are many more. There are many more cars. You can bring a law and just restrict that to one. We are not restricting. If, if government, if government, if government has facilitated that, mm. government is saying, as for us, we want to buy made in Ghana cars. Then let us buy Kantanka. We are buying Kantanka. But the Minister of Finance drives a Kantanka. Yeah, but that's or the Minister of Finance. It's not... But it's not, isn't he Ghanaian enough? Yeah, but I'm saying that it is not legalized. Now it has become legal that if you that want to buy a car... you buy a Ghana-made car. Yeah, but the people... And so what we do... Have you considered the number of people who are losing their jobs because... Have you considered the number of people who get new, better-paying jobs when you bring in more automotive industry um, companies? No, but... It's just not the cars. This company are just coming to assemble. Bring, they are assembling. But start, still that will create more jobs. Yeah, but the one more factory you bring will create more jobs than not bring it at the all. Sprayer, and you need to understand. The sprayer, the sprayer can, can now work in a factory instead of sitting in a, in a kiosk somewhere and waiting on somebody to bash somebody's car to have it fixed. He can now work in a factory. How, he can now be is, better what is trained. plan to have this factory recruit them? How many factories can you release? But the factory can only recruit from Ghana. Are you sure? I'm telling you, look, I sit here and I, and I see foreign investors come. And after six months, they don't want expatriates to work in their in their companies. They want Ghanaians. First of all, the Ghanaian doesn't come with baggage. He lives here. It's cheaper and better for the expatriate. Mm -hmm. It's more convenient. Mm -hmm. The Ghanaian understands the market. Mm -hmm. So when he has a Ghanaian working for him, he, his access to market and speed to market is much quicker. Let's consider the political side. The mm -hmm. association of vehicle importers or vehicle dealers are not happy. They are even planning to vote against you. I, I, I think that would be unfortunate if they thought so. Because then what, are you saying we shouldn't create more opportunity by bringing more car assembly plants to Ghana? Are you saying we shouldn't bring more opportunity by bringing original equipment manufacturers to Ghana? Let me tell you, before COVID, we had arranged, the GIPC, to take a number of spare parts dealers in Guta to Mexico. Because Mexico is looking for new markets. And Mexico does almost all the OEM as spare parts for the American market. Mm. They are willing to come to Ghana. So I said, okay, guys, you are the people who sell. Let's go there. You might make deals that today you wholesale, but tomorrow you will be the people assembling and manufacturing the, um, the, uh, the spare parts. Isn't that better than importing, changing foreign exchange, going to import the spare parts and bringing and selling it to me? 
It's better that yeah. we actually manufacture them here. We assemble them here and sell them here. I sure that I know we'll the transport sector with this plan. Okada riders are excited and jubilating that Mahama said he legalized their trade. They, they have soon forgotten that it was the same government that banned Okada. Yeah, but after, for us in February, after in February, after four we, years of retirement, he has remembered that maybe it was a, an error. So it's amazing you didn't say for votes. <laughs> but but look, look, listen, though, we in February mm -hmm. clearly understood that we need to regulate the Okada place. Mm. I mean, I showed you some pictures of Okada accidents, mm. which many doctors have sent and says, ban this Okada thing. We are creating disaster. They don't stop at traffic lights, they cross cars, and we are all witnesses to and that. And Okada can kill at most two human beings in an accident. A space bus can kill 50 people plus. We haven't banned space buses. But we, we are not going to but, but have space uh, space cars having accidents like you have in Okada. No, but we are the, the, the most recent... Oh, then, oh, oh, then, then Omaru, 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 I guess from here, hmm. from here, you are going to walk to city. No, I'm not going to walk. Because a car might be dangerous exactly. for you. So my die. point is that motorbikes... Are, you, you assess the risk and see comparatively what it means. If I have a... Do you want me to give you those pictures okay. so I put them online? Are we... Ghanaians will be mortified. Are we against motorbikes or Okada? We are against the flagrant disregard for rules in the sector. That is why we said we won't ban Okada, but we have that, that we will regulate them. But we have that Says as that well. Everybody on Okada will wear a helmet. If you pick anybody else who has to sit on the car, on the thing, he has to wear a helmet. They have to abide by traffic so rules. So why don't you also you then to... legalize it, which is what your mama is saying, that legalize it, let the driver, the rider, and realize now that it's a... It's is a it now before it's realized? Yeah, it's a point. Well, we, we see the use. We see the use that it's useful because there are certain places that cars cannot go. No, you so you use... Hang on, let mm -hmm. me answer. Mm -hmm. There are certain places cars cannot go. So you can use the Okada to get there. That is a fair point. You... But they must comply with rules. They must abide by the rules. It hurts me when I see a young man have an accident. I'll tell you, I was coming out of a traffic light that had turned green. Three motorbikes suddenly just sped across. I had to scrape the car on my left to avoid hitting and killing these three people. That's true. And why should I sit there and say that, oh, it's okay, it's all is tickety boo? Do you, no, do you I have to regulate them. Do you support legalization of Fukata? Legalization of a car. It's already happening. They are using it. I mean, I, I didn't ban them. Whoever banned them. Your mama banned them. But so, so, so when he was leaving, why <laughs> didn't he arrest every Okada rider? I am saying that I, if the, uh, what is happening, I will regulate it so okay. it's safer, it's convenient, and it serves the purpose for Fine. which it does. Let's end. Your tenor may be ending Kotenomos to John uh, Nana Kufado's tenor. Which I think is in the next four years. Well, I mean, it will end in, on, on January 7 before... If That's a temporary uh, procedural process. Would you <laughs> continue to be GIPC boss in the next government? or you If want the to... president feels that, yes, I'm doing a good enough job and he thinks that, well, I should continue, yes. If you don't thinks, want a ministerial job? If he thinks that there's somewhere I can do better, it's up to him. Do you think, totally. there's, do you think there's somewhere you can do better? Each individual in this world can always do better. Where do I live by the maxim that... Every day, I must strive to do better. Fine. Do and I think every human being should do that. Do you think you can do better elsewhere or you're fine here? It's possible. I mean, that I can do better elsewhere. Like where? <laughs> it's up to the president to tell me where he thinks if I'll he, be best. If he asks you to give him a place you want to go to, in, if he wins. Oh, he wins. I, I'll tell you something about our president. Mm. No, no, no. Tell me about you. <laughs> be, what about yeah. me? What would you want to take up? A job? I want to serve Ghana. You're not going to retire? No, I'm not going to retire. I want to serve Ghana at any point. You have great beard. I thought you were, you know, gone past the no, Well, yeah, then I've actually, let me tell you a, a secret, though. I've had this great beard since I was 20 years. Oh, so it's not um, a factor of age? Yeah. You know, I went to the clinic the last time to do a medical. Mm -hmm. And so the, the nurse's sister, we had to take, she had to take my vitals, my weight, my this and that. So, of course, they have to put age. So, I said, how old are you? I said, 61. Then she burst out laughing. I said, why are you laughing? She said, we are lying. I know if you're 61. We are. You should retire. We are observing photography. You have all over in your office. You have artifacts of pot bellied men, and uh, you are not <laughs> having pot belly yourself. But oh, you no. Have, Actually, somebody saw me and said, what, what happened to your stomach? And I said, well, which stomach? It's still there. He said, but no, you don't have a, a belly. Mm. I've never really had a, po a okay. pot belly. But he says, you've... During the COVID period, I got the opportunity to say, ah, I can do something about myself. Remember I told you, I always think that whatever situation you can use... The ever, take advantage. Yeah, yeah, you must take it as an... Op any challenge is an opportunity waiting to happen. How seriously is photography in your life? Very serious. Because photography for me is a graphical expression of recording history. When you take a photograph, the instant you take that photograph, it's never going to happen again in life. You've captured time and history. 
on a photograph. So you don't plan to retire and go into photography? As I'm already into or... photography. Okay. So it's not a question I plan to retire. But why, why do you want me to retire if I can do good? I just if I was not working, mm -hmm. trust me, you know what the big plan I had? I was going to adopt 100 kids. Wow, not to be an MPM. No. And what's your constituency? Me, I'm a but I'm Cape Coast. I'm a Cape Coast man. Oh, okay. I wish you all the best, sir. Thank, thank you, you very much. I think the country needs more people who think radically different from what you have. People who think visionary. Will you run president for president? No, I have a great president already. I don't need to run. He if, has the if ideas he gets that I would seen, Would you want to run? No, I'm sure there are people who are well positioned to do that, that I can serve and advise. And you don't always serve as number two? You can't be that man. It's not a question of number two, number three, number four, number five. It's a question of value that they can extract from you. You are free, Grant. See you, GIPC. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Baru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be it for our show today. And uh, of course, the face-to-face -face show would be back next Tuesday. You don't want to miss that segment. My name is Omaru Sandamado. This is City TV. It's your world. Stay with us because we have more programming coming your way.